Okay. This is our synthy. Okay, which is in it. An old UK synthesizer. Okay. Um, this synthy is original to Stetson. In other words, Stetson bought this new back in the 1970s. Uh, there was a professor by the name of uh, Fiesel who also has his name on a rehearsal hall over there in McMahon, correct? Okay. Uh, that taught a winter term course in electronic music and the university bought this as the hardware to, that he was using to teach electronic music. Uh, when that winter term course went away, which we don't even have winter term anymore basically, but it was kind of a short term in the December month that you could take like shorter courses on focused topics, um, it was retired to the basement, okay? When I was a student here, we noticed it in the basement, we're like, that's actually a piece of history that needs to be, I, know, I felt a little bit like India, one of those Indiana Jones moments, which is like, this belongs in a museum, right? Okay, those kind of things. Um, we re uh, recovered it, tried to fix it up and get it working as best as possible, but it, it kind of limped along for a number of years. Uh, and then until about five years ago, I found an engineer in Orlando that was par part of uh, a makerspace in Orlando that was like, uh, when I was telling him that we had one of these things, he's like, I would clean that up for free and get it working just for the, the, the pure experience of getting to work on one of these things. And, and he did. Got it all working uh, with the exception of, I think, the voltmeter here is not uh, working. And I think I'm, I'm blanking on what the other thing that's not working, basically. Uh, I'm not going to plug it in today, I don't think, unless I really go through this fast. But what I want to show you is the insides to show you that some of these same components, the resistor, the capacitor, uh, and these, um, these variable resistors that are, that, are, uh, that are pan pots, basically, are the same thing that's inside this creating uh, electronic music sounds, okay? So the opening this up is a little complicated, okay? Uh, and I am doing this. Please do not do this when you get in the studio, okay? Um, because it is, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's a fragile piece, and it's not replaceable. Uh, the, comp the company that, I mean, I guess technically it's replaceable, but the company that is rebuilding these now has a waiting list like years long. Uh, so <laughs> it's not something that I would like to have to replace anytime soon. Let's put it that way, okay? So it's a wooden, wooden outer case, okay? And there's panels that slide out. And once you remove those panels, you can start to see some of the, the circuitry inside. Uh, but there's a, a pan pot, like the, I, sh I showed you that, the back of the, res the, uh, the knob, basically. There's the back of the knob, the back of the knob. And you can see all this beautifully laid out wiring with um, zip ties in it to kind of uh, move things around. There's a transformer there. There's a capacitor there. Those are bigger capacitors than the one I was using, okay? Um, I'm going to move this. I have to actually remove the power cable. And the other thing is don't do this because, okay, let's see. That little circuit, I was using 9 volts of electricity. This plugs into the wall, which means it uses how much voltage? Do you all know? 120 volts, okay? Uh, if I were in the UK, it would be, do you know, Nick, the difference? It's 220 or 240, depending on where you are. It fluctuates. So it's, they actually use twice as much voltage in the UK, OK? Um, it's, so it, uh, big difference between 9 and 120, yes, OK? Uh, so definitely I'm unplugging this while I do this, OK? That's the reason why. Uh, the other one, I felt comfortable just touching things while it's plugged in. This one, definitely do not feel comfortable touching while it's plugged in, OK? Um, I actually have to remove the AC cable in order to get this slide to slide out and the bottom piece has to slide out as well but if we start to look on the inside here you'll see a lot of the same components there you go okay so we have I don't know can you recognize all the resistors here these are all resistors uh, this is a capacitor capacitor uh, these little brown disks are capacitors as well. They're just a smaller uh, capacitor than the, the larger cylinders. Okay. But, uh, and these are um, variable resistors too uh, for tuning it. So these are actually uh, ones that, they're not, they're not made to be serviced from uh, the outside while you're performing basically, but they, do, they did make it so that 
if it goes out of tune over time, you can open it up. And these little uh, things here are actually to get it back in line, back in tune. And that's what that, um, that engineer uh, volunteer that, uh, that uh, put, helped uh, get this back and rehabilitate it uh, went through and read the original service manual, made sure that all of these are, are back in line, basically. So that's why uh, you don't want to open up this up and mess, mess with it. I wanted to open it up and show you that inside this seemingly closed system is nothing more than a bunch of those same components that I had my one oscillator uh, connected out, uh, at the, in my original demo, OK? Uh, and you can see some of the pan pots at the back, basically. And they even have resistors hanging off of them as they're, as they're uh, connected to things. Uh, any questions about your, what you're seeing in here? Yeah, come on. Here? Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are more capacitors. And again, capacitors store electricity and then release the electricity. Resist, resistors will resist the flow of electricity depending on how highly they're rated. OK. Um, I hope this is not something that is intimidating to you, but I, I, my aim here is to demystify what's going on inside the box, OK? Um, we will be working from this side, OK, which is a lot nicer. Um, and you should notice on this side some familiar terms, yes? What do you recognize up here? Reverb. Reverb. Filter. Envelope, input, output. input and output, yes. And then we have oscillators here. Um, I don't know, do these shapes look familiar to you in here? Yes? OK. Um, so a lot, and, and, and this is the key thing. You, you all have been using software whose design is informed a lot by how these synthesizers were designed back in the 60s and 70s, OK? Uh, and so part of what uh, I'm, I'm, I was so glad when I was able to reintroduce hardware synthesis into this class, because I think it will help you be a better user of software today, because the software today is informed a lot by the design aesthetic of these hardware synthesizers from the 60s and 70s, OK? Uh, and getting some time firsthand with your hands on these things, I think, will help uh, help you be a better a better user of the today's technology as well. Okay. Any questions before we close?